Welcome to another stocked and loaded episode of the Sports Card Nation podcast. The show that brings you all the important hobby news, discussions, debates, opinions, info, and interviews with key hobby and sports dignitaries. Also, if you're good, you know we are going to give away something. Now, here's the guy that wanted the cards more than the gum. John Newman. What is up? Episode 156. Glad to be back. I want to start off with uh, some condolences. Uh, sad day last week. Uh, Chris Carlin of Upper Deck, a uh, friend of the show, someone I've gotten to, to know. Um, uh, many know his brother John was batting, battling ALS. Uh, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, uh, terrible disease, uh, and unfortunately uh, took a turn for the worst and uh, uh, passed away uh, day before Thanksgiving. Um, and it's never good whenever something like that happens, but I think it's even more difficult uh, during the holiday season uh, when it occurs. Uh, I share, you know, unfortunately, uh, a thing in common, uh, me and Chris both lost uh, brothers here in the year of, of 2021. And uh, it's never it's never easy, especially in both of these cases, the person passing away uh, too young, too young. And so uh, on behalf of Sports Card Nation, myself, and I think probably most of you want to offer a heartfelt uh, condolences and thoughts, uh, Chris and, and the Carlin family. Uh, you've been in my thoughts and, and prayers uh, this last week, and uh, it's never easy. It's never, you know, never goes away truly. But uh, you know, Chris is someone that's been very unselfish, very giving uh, to the hobby. And so, if you wanna, you know, kind of give back or. or you know, send condolences. I'm sure you'd appreciate it. Um, you know, again, uh, you, you know, uh, if you want to give to ALS to, you know, maybe someday they can find a cure or, or some sort of uh, medication that at least uh, uh, kind of, you know, slows the symptoms down, if you will. Uh, you know, that's always a, a good thing, maybe in their name, if you will. So, uh, with that, uh, something I did, but again, to, you know, teach their own. But I wanted to to start off with that, and uh, we're thinking about you, Chris, and the Carlin family, uh, you know. All right, so let's uh, on with, you know, regular business. We got we to gotta keep going, right? Uh, uh, anyone will, will tell you that. Today's guest from that 70s card show, John Keating. Uh, one thing I love about John, he... You know, like myself, he kind of says what he feels. He doesn't care, you know, whose feelings might get hurt or who may disagree. Uh, it's refreshing when you get to talk to someone uh, on that level. John John calls it like he sees it, the straight shooter down to earth. We, we, uh, we cut it up, had a few laughs, and uh, I always enjoy those conversations uh, with those kind of folks. And so happy to have... Uh, John on the show today. Uh, I think you'll appreciate it uh, as well. So with that being said, let's get this show started. Yo and hello everybody, Mike here, Baseball Collector, and remember that the hobby is the people. Guys, what's up? This is Max from the Sports Card Shop. Here are this week's new releases. On the 3rd of December, we have 2020-21 Panini Mosaic Basketball Hobby. It's a pretty good product to come out tomorrow. Also on the 3rd, we have Panini 1 and 1 Basketball. And then on the 8th, we have 2021 Panini Spectra Football. Also on the 8th again, we have Topps Chrome Black Baseball. And another release for the 8th, we have 2021 Topps Heritage High Number Baseball. This week's Sports Card Nation listener exclusive deal is Panini Optic Contenders Hobby Basketball Boxes for $4.99. Direct message the code SCN on Twitter at underscore sportscardshop 
to get the deal. Thanks again, John. Keep up the good work. The Sports Card Shop is your small town local card shop with a global reach. Located in New Buffalo, Michigan, the shop is one of the most accessible in the Midwest. In addition to being an authorized Panini Direct Dealer, the Sports Card Shop carries all major trading card brands, including Tops, Upper Deck, Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh!, and more. With all that new wax, a half million singles, and showcases full of graded cards, you're sure to find something great for your collection, whether you're just starting out or a seasoned collector. The Sports Card Shop is your one stop shop. So call us, come see us, or visit us on the web and social media. Our phone number is 269 469 0140. Website is the Sports Card Shop at moco.com. The Sports Card Shop is part of the Moco Retail Group, connecting sports, the hobby, and people around the world. I know the Chunky that left these Chunkies. Come in. Come the door. I know you're in there. Hello, Sports Card Nation. All right. It's time for Newman's Rambling, where I select one question I get each week. And answer it on the air. John, you seem like an astute man. Thank you, Mr. Walken. Maybe you can help explain something to me. Well, I'll give it my best shot. All right, this question comes from Hojo's Carts. He asks, What is your favorite current basketball product and why? All right, so I'm going to answer this sort of two ways. Uh, my favorite product that Panini makes, uh, which holds the basketball license at the moment, is Chronicles. Uh, their their whole line of Chronicles is one of my favorite to rip. However, when it comes to strictly basketball, Chronicles is right there, but I'm going to go with the uh, Optic, you know, and I know Optic and Prism always get compared and, you know, Optic should be worth more, it's better looking, you know, Prism's kind of the the his, historic uh, of the two, if you will, probably too strong of a word, but more known. Um, but uh, optics really prism with a better design. Let's be honest, right? I mean, the prism is is, is probably the more valuable when we're talking about rookie cards. Uh, but when you look at prism, they're sort of basic, right? If you look at the different years of prism, they're, they're very very similar and close looking they, they only can go certain ways because they have to have those sort of metal borders but prism uh, our optic isn't kind of pigeonholed there and so they can change uh, their designs there's more color it pops better you got that rated rookie uh, logo and uh, so uh, when it comes to basketball uh, it's either optic or, or Chronicles for me. And uh, really think Optic should be right there or surpass Prism to me as, as you know, just a better looking, uh, should be, you know, better looking doesn't always equal more valuable. But then it's not all about the value anyway. But so to answer your question, I'll go with Optic. What doesn't one of one card shop do? From box, case, and personal brakes, there's always fire being pulled. They offer bulk grading subs, and their large store located in Strongsville, Ohio, offers an incredible selection of sports cards, non-sports, and authentic autograph memorabilia. Steve and family will treat you right. Check them out on Instagram at one of one card shop or on the web at oneofonecardshop.com. It's time for the Hobby What's Up, where we go around the hobby world and tell you all the latest news and breaking stories from the hobby we love. What's up? 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 Atlantic City, the site of this year, or I should say the 2022 National Sports Collectors Convention. 
I will be going. It is in driving distance, and I'm happy to report. My wife uh, will also be going. She won't be at the show, but she will be uh, there enjoying the beach with a book and a beverage. And uh, she, uh, I told her, you know, you better start looking for a house if that's what we want to do. And so we, we rented a beach house uh, not too far from Atlantic City, four bedrooms. Uh, seven beds, and so we'll be uh, some hobbyists. Uh, we'll just put it that way. We'll uh, be hanging out with us, and uh, we'll go to the show. She will enjoy Atlantic City, the beach, and the beach life. And uh, so we've got our accommodation set, which is sometimes uh, one of the hardest part parts. And driving that that part. You know, it's a little bit easier. I don't have to make plain reservations. I can bring a little more stuff, maybe a little more equipment than I traditionally would. And so we are all set for the NSCC coming up at the end of July, front part of August. The Brooklyn Collection uh, from Tops, online exclusive, uh, went on sale. Uh, saw a lot of complaints about the design, and I saw a lot of posts of Montgomery Club members saying they declined their two boxes they were allowed to order. I ordered my two. haven't got them yet. They will be here shortly. Maybe by the time you hear this recording, um, I, I will have them in hand, uh, have a show uh, this weekend. So if I get them in time, I'll probably bring them uh, to the show with me, but, uh, you know, people complaining they didn't like the design, um, but, you know, two autos, it's traditionally, uh, it's been a, a good product for me, uh, the ones I opened especially, so don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but I definitely uh, bought my two uh, prices on eBay, uh, you know, they, they're online, uh, for Montgomery members, they were 150 uh, a box uh, on eBay, that last check, they were going for about $200. So uh, not a crazy markup. And I think those crazy markups or those ROI days where two, three, four times might be in the rear view mirror. Maybe some of the Sapphire products uh, get you there, get us there. I don't know. But I think those boom hay days, uh, might be few and far between that we got sort of accustomed to uh, the last couple years. Uh, we'll we'll see. Uh, SCP Auction House has announced they have half a T206 Wagner, uh, but it's a, a pretty good half because it still has his whole face and his name. Uh, the card that, that's left, uh, the little more than half that's left, has no visible creasing. And it's one of the first ever cards ever graded by PSA uh, back in 1995. It's numbered 0000002. That's right, six zeros and a two. Only six copies of this card uh, are rumored to be in existence. This one, I said, like I said, one of the, the second card graded by PSA. Uh, it's graded authentic. It's got that A. And uh, opens uh, up for auction at the $25,000 level. The auction starts on January 19th and runs to February 5th. So January 19th, February 5th, opening bid $25K. And it's the best half Onus Wagner that I've ever seen. I'll say that much. Uh, the Ty Cobb Museum in Royston, Georgia, every year, uh, you know, the last few years, uh, sells a special made card uh, to help uh, offset some of the costs of running the museum. Uh, that cards, Those cards go for $10. They are available for sale now. They also are doing, I believe, a random giveaway for a Ty Cobb Auto. Anyone that buys that card, I believe, is entered. They also have a few of the past year's cards available for sale as well.
All right, this just in, literally, before I had to produce and get the show on, we have another acquisition, if you will. PSA, uh, again, uh, has acquired uh, Card Ladder, the creation of Chris McGill, Christina Thorson, and Josh Johnson. So uh, PSA has acquired uh, the IP, you know, the intellectual property. Uh, I did speak to them at Card Ladder about uh, not the dollars and cents. That's 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 a personal question, but uh, they assured me they will be still doing what they do now for Card Ladder. So their roles within Card Ladder and the analytics program uh, are not changing. It's just that PSA will uh, own that brand. So there you go. Some late news. Uh, under the wire here before we went to uh, press. Iron Sports Cards is your number one source for all your PSA and other grading submissions. Their elite status improves turnaround times. Heck, they even provide the card savers. Their chat rooms provide updates on all your submissions. They also offer wax options and single cards to cover all the bases. Check them out on Facebook at Iron Sports Cards Group or on the web at ironsportscards.com or even give them a call at 1-877-I-R-O-N-P-S-A. Rob's got you covered. Sports Card Nation, it's now time to chop it up with our featured guest on the One of One Card Shop guest line. Let's go! All right, joining me now on the Sports Card Nation guest line, he's the host of that 70s card show. Uh, they launched in uh, eight, late May, early June. Uh, Mr. John Keating, welcome to Sports Card Nation. Hey, John. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Thanks, thanks for coming on. You're a vintage guy, uh, which is something I, I've always done. Uh, I, I'm starting to do it more the last couple of years. We'll Kind of, I think our reasons will probably be similar to to why that is. We'll we'll get into that, uh, but let's talk about you know you launched uh, you launched that seventies card show uh, in uh, June, I believe. And correct me uh, if I'm wrong. Just kind of talk about you know what was it that made you you know say hey I can do this and 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 you know we're I think you're thirty something episodes in now, so. Uh, things are going well. Yeah, we're getting there. I don't know. You know, it's like most ideas people have. They have, you know, probably a ridiculous idea. But I, I've been listening to content uh, like yours and, of course, Dr. Jim's content. And I was ho- I was hooked. Uh, tried to go to the gym. And uh, I guess, you know, started listening to the podcast, True, Co- True, True Crime Podcast. But then that gets a little, you know, that gets really morose really fast. So, uh the lighter fare like our hobby is uh it's just it's addicting right so uh it's more to follow in the footsteps of stuff like you what you're putting out there and dr jim and some other ones matt salmon used to have one called wax ecstatic yeah and i don't know what happened there but uh that was just a fun listen and it was a really long listen but i enjoyed it so yeah we're we're long too like you know which is why we have the hobby quick hits, which is the shorter version. Uh, you know, just me, one topic, 20, 30 minutes. Um, but you know, all content is, is consumable. I mean, I, I have some people tell me I listen on the way to work and then <laughs> on the way home. Um, but you know, I've always, you know, I get asked every so often, you know, about from folks that are pondering a launch in their own show and, and, I, I got a lot of support when we launched in 2018, and I sort of always try to reciprocate that. Um, I'll steal a page out of uh, Eric, uh, uh, you know, the, the the those back pages who was always says, you know, create content, right? Whether it's a, a YouTube video or an audio podcast, and it's something uh, we can look back upon. And you know, I hate to say it, but when we're not here. Uh, you know, those that uh, family and, and those that uh, come up behind us will, will leave something uh, for them as well. Now, obviously, when we create content, we're thinking more of the here and now, but it does make sense, you know, what, what Eric uh, alludes to there. And so I've just always tried to be um, an ambassador, an advocate. I know I use those two words uh, at nauseum, but I think they're important. You know, I got my start 
at seven and, and started shows uh, at, at 15 and then store at 20. And I've, I've always had, you know, the, the hobby for me has always been welcoming and people have been uh, helpful all along the way. And I just tried to be uh, the same way, uh, you know, now. And, um, you know, so when anyone asks me about content, I'm always supportive. You know, I, I, I've said this a lot of times, John, too, is I, I got in probably at the right time in 2018, uh, a lot less shows. Uh, you know, the waters weren't as the pool wasn't as full as I, I like to use as an analogy. Uh, so the timing was sort of right. But, you know, the, the hobby's blown up, too, and along with everything else. Uh, content creation and so there's more people in the hobby to uh you know listen to the the more shows uh in the hobby what's been i always ask this uh when i have someone else that has a is a host of a podcast what's been the biggest surprise what is something you sort of like didn't expect or didn't realize as much I didn't think anybody would listen. You know, I thought maybe I'd have my my brother. I only have two brothers, and I, they both listen, I think, or maybe they don't listen anymore, but I'm surprised one person listens, let alone. I don't know how many listen, but it's it's really neat to to see that somebody is listening, and it's just an opinion, right? Our, our What we say on here, we're not CNN or Fox News. We're just giving our opinion and our take, and we have experience behind that, but, uh, you know, the, the fact is nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. And we learned a lot about that this summer, right? With with Mm -hmm. the news that came out of left field. But, uh, yeah, and, you know, to speak on something else you said, I don't think there's enough content, to to tell you the truth. I could listen to it. You know, I don't listen to radio anymore. Uh, I have a a phone full of music that I barely listen to. I'd rather listen to (laughs) uh, hobby content. I'd rather listen to hobby content all day, every day. So uh, I think that there should be more. So if anybody's contemplating doing it just do it please and do it do it often and you're a pioneer and that's you know you paved paved the way for some of us but hopefully there'll be more down the road so well i appreciate that john there was guys before me you know it's it, it's kind of like sports right you just different different errors yeah. uh you know yeah. guys that have played before and then you you come in the league now you're in the league I, that's how i look at it uh, again, I try to, to, to be helpful, you know, the, everyone has a different personality, um, to each their own, but, uh, yeah, I mean, people do it, you know, I try to do it a different way. And I, I, I kind of live by something my grandfather told me, he used to say, you know, uh, if you, if you be yourself, you don't have to pretend to be anybody else. And, uh, you know, pretty simple statement, but, really makes uh, all the sense you know when he told it to me i was very young and so it, i didn't understand it in the way i do today and uh you know some of those things that you get when you're you're younger kind of come uh, a lot clearer uh when you're when you're an older person so uh, that's just the way i am i you know people ask me stuff you know almost every day and i just try to be as helpful like you said uh the other you, you made a great point too john is it doesn't matter how many years we do this, whether it's, you know, someone's been in the hobby three years or like myself uh, approaching 40, you never know. You, there are no experts. Uh, there's just experience. Uh, you know, if, you know, I was on this very show, uh, before, you know, as the pandemic first kind of was hitting uh, the U S and I was, I told everyone, I said, man, I, I, I hope I'm wrong. But I think cards are going to be in for, you know, going to take a back seat to other important things in life with this pandemic. And it's, you know, as you know, it's been the probably two biggest hobby years uh, in its history. And I was wrong. Right. And um, that shows that shows you what 38 years or whatever it was at the time uh, of experience sketchy. Just don't know. Uh, You mentioned, uh, uh, you know, uh, what happened uh, with the fanatics licensing, not, no one uh, saw that coming, including uh, sounds like Tops and Panini uh, themselves. So, the, you know, it can only give you your best, uh, you know, uh, experienced opinion. Uh, but uh, and that's, I, I don't know about you, but that's really for for an old guy like me. It's some of the most fun in the hobby. Is is a lot of this unexpected stuff that sort of keeps you uh, on the toes. If everything was you know, chalk and predictable, it probably wouldn't be as exciting. Not that I like everything that happens, 
but at the speed that it's happening, you, you really, uh, you know, it, it keeps me, uh, it keeps me engaged, uh, and interested and, uh, never a dull moment. You know, we, uh, when I first started, when I first started this show, you know, the news cycle, uh, a lot of t- one of the reasons I went to to being an uh, an interview show is the news cycle wasn't what we know it is as right now. There wouldn't be a lot of news. I'm like, so I'm like running out of stuff to talk about, and I'm like, I got to have someone on. So we just talk amongst, you know, talk to each other about the hobby and what they're doing. Uh, and so that was then. And as you know now, and everyone else probably listening, uh, this every week there's five six. A uh, big news story. So never a dull moment. It, it's fun, and uh, you know, here we are. So uh, I mean, the, with the show, you're you're also. Uh, I, I know from you being on with Doctor Jim, uh, love those episodes. Uh, you're you're a soccer guy too, where that's not necessarily uh, common. Kind of talk about you know how that happened for for those that are, are wondering. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I grew up a huge baseball fan. Baseball was everything in the 70s. Um, I mean, it was the biggest sport in the country for sure. Uh, the strike kind of burned me out in 94, turned my attention to football, went hardcore on football for about 20 years, right? And then soccer. I've always appreciated European soccer, uh, you know, how the fans approach the game, uh, the loyalty, and you're, you know, you're born into it, all that stuff. The songs, the chants, all, you know, I would go through whatever ESPN uh, eight sometimes and you'd hear games on 15 years ago and it was just the crowd singing the whole time. So the whole pageantry really attracted me. And uh, I remember watching um, uh, a match Manchester City uh, last last game of the season and a team that much like my Philadelphia sports teams kind of downtrodden team for much of its history and ended up winning the championship in what we call overtime. They call extra time there. They ended up winning their first Premier League championship, in uh, which was crazy, right? With They needed two goals and extra time to do it. They did it, and I was hooked. Uh, never seen anything like that. Part of that, too, is I'm a fan of the band Oasis, who, uh, you know. The, the Gallagher's. Man- yeah, the Gallagher's are Manchester City loyal- loyalists. So, anyway, that's that, and I've been, you know, probably about, I don't know, six years or so, been hardcore to soccer. Oddly enough, I don't collect much of it. I have probably 100 cards that are just cards. It's nothing I seek out. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 my collecting does not ne- has never reflected my uh, passion, except for when I was a kid in the 70s. Baseball, baseball cards lined up after that. You know, never a big football card collector, but I was the biggest Eagles fan, as you can see behind me, uh, at a time. And, you know, Manchester City as well, but I don't I don't collect those sports for some reason. But just a big fan. Yeah, that that's cool. I I will catch, you know, especially with the World Cup. I know that's sort of like uh you, you know, when that comes around you're a fan. I'll watch some of that. Uh but uh you know, I'm a Brooklyn uh city kid and soccer wasn't, you know, it was baseball, it was football, uh even hockey, basketball, was the four major sports. Um but listen, uh soccer cards uh the last couple of years have have uh you know, risen uh, sharply, uh, you know, even if you probably wanted to do uh, some some cards here so it can be expensive. I know, are you a, a Montgomery 582 uh, guy by any chance? Not at all, no. I mean, I I, uh, I like to tell people that, that all the cards I, I'm after have already been made. Going to step aside for a quick break, but we'll be right back with more with John Keeney. Greg Morris Cards wants to buy your cards. A long-trusted name in the sports card business, Greg has been buying sports card collections for over a decade now. Any sport, baseball, basketball, football, or hockey, in any era, vintage or modern, will do. Just no junk wax error sets, please. To learn more and to sell Greg Morris your cards, go to www.gregmorriscards.com. Fill out the consignment sale request form and someone will get back to you on how to get cash for your cards. Also, if you're a dealer looking to sell your collection, Greg Morris wants to talk. Plenty of dealers use Greg Morris' massive eBay platform as a way to consign their cards. Take advantage of Greg's experience in the hobby to get more bang for your buck. We are back with John Keeney. 
But I will tell you though, think about soccer, right? And I don't I don't follow American soccer because it's kind of different. You know, think about Europe's got five NFLs in it, okay? Yeah. Uh, the in England, Germany, France, Spain, and Italy, it's the biggest uh, sport by far, uh, soccer. So uh, the only problem there is these cats haven't been trained to collect cards, right? They've been trained to collect stickers all their lives in a sticker yeah. book. So, so uh, it's interesting to see. And now the people, I, I spoke to somebody about this at one of the shows recently, I think the Las Vegas show, and, you know, about that very thing. He said it's starting to catch on hard. So it's... Uh, it's neat to see that. It's just it's, it's essentially it's training a whole culture, soccer culture, how to collect, and that's what's happening right now, right? So, cool. yeah, I would, yeah, and and you know, for me, it's funny, you know, with the Montgomery Five Eighty Two Club, you know, they offered some soccer offerings. The first few I didn't purchase because, you know, I don't do soccer, and then you yeah. see, you know, let's I'm I'm an honest guy, John, you know. I, you see what these are going secondary market, and I'm like, I probably should buy the next one just based on that, even if it's not yep. something I want to open and just kind of move it and sort of pay for this this membership price. And and that's what I did with the last few uh, soccer releases. And it's crazy what some of those products uh, brought. And you know, some of them only had like 30 cards uh, in them. And I just you know. I just sort of put them on the auction site or 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 my slabs and uh, would uh, you know and I tried to beat comps as best I can and not you know necessarily gouge anyone and and I mean they sold and um, you know someone uh, someone was happy they got to purchase you know an online exclusive thing with with the Montgomery Club and right. you know not being a soccer guy was able to to move it and put it towards that their membership price, but it's amazing, you know, what, what soccer has done. And I'm not even into soccer cards. I'm just in the hobby. You don't have to be to know. Uh, and we've seen that across the board with a lot of things, you know, uh, even F uh, formula one and, and wrestling cards have, have, have skyrocketed and, uh, you know, Val and, and Logan and Jason won't like, you know, NASCAR has been the only kind of thing that really, hasn't been hit by the bug, so to speak. And, uh, right. you know, I had them on the show uh, about a month ago. We kind of talked about maybe reasons uh, for that. Maybe promotion uh, is one of the issues there. But It's like hockey, yeah. man. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, to me, that NASCAR is no different than hockey. The, the loyal fans, diehard fans, but it's only going to get, I think, I, I think you've seen the growth and it's maxed out, right? Well, even you know NASCAR, John, and I'm I'm not I know the drivers. I'm not a NASCAR fan uh, per se, but those those tracks and stadiums are full. I mean, they're the, the fan base yeah. is rabid. I mean, they're not. It's not like they're hurting. It just apparently they don't collect the, the cards in the same fashion they root for their 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 race team or their individual yeah. drivers. And you know, like we talked about on the show, if I'm Panini. And I'm keeping that license, or you know, I'm, I, I think they could do a better job uh, marketing that. Uh, maybe I don't know what. Maybe they don't care as much as I do on the show talking about it, you know. But I don't know. I'm not behind in those four walls. But I mean, if you're gonna have the license, I, you know, we talked about even like going to the track and just handing out promo packs. You know, who knows how many race fans don't even really realize. You know, that they really make cards still, you know. Uh, like yeah. Val said, a lot of them still collect, you know, die cast, the cars themselves that they make. Yeah. Panini should be trying to get their their racing cards in with the card, you know. Like, remember, you know, the old starting lineups that have a card in there as well with the figure. You know, get a card in there with the car. And... uh just things like that. I guess it's easy for me to play armchair Panini exec uh, with the rate, you know, with the NASCAR stuff. But I, I don't know. I just think they probably could do a better job. But maybe they, you know, maybe they know something we don't. Maybe they're not planning on renewing. Them. Who knows? I, I, you know, I just if you're gonna do something right, you, you, you to me, I'm, I'm a guy that's gonna go a hundred percent. But uh, you know, it, it's the ones. It's the one part of the card hobby that really hasn't you know went to 
the same levels. But you never know. You never know what could happen, and, and we'll see. And who knows, you know, where that license uh, goes and winds up and what, if it goes somewhere else, what that new company, uh, you know, may may do with it. So, you know, uh, this, we're not going to make this a NASCAR show. Yeah, that's go ahead. the most I've ever spoken about NASCAR. So. Yeah, and that, that, <laughs> <laughs> and I just Val's not gonna like me saying this. I think we'll 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 cut to the we'll cut the NASCAR talk uh, right there. Uh, other than when they were on the show, that's probably the most right, right. Uh, I've talked to. But uh, you know, the, the hobby is the people, as we say, and that yep. whatever you collect, hobby your way, all that good stuff. But uh, let's talk some vintage. Uh, I know uh, it's something I've really kind of escalated. Uh, I've always done it, even when I was a kid. Uh, it's. I mean, I started in what would be considered the vintage era in 1979. I wasn't vintage during during the exact time. Obviously, right. it was current time. Uh, but it's always had a. I always have a soft place in in, in my heart for it. But you know, I kind of sort of got away uh, from it for a little bit, and then the last couple of years, I just kind of that light bulb went on, and I just said, you know what? You, like you said, I've heard you say this, you know. You just see all the shiny new stuff, like every table. And I like it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to, you know, besmirch it. I, 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 I deal with it, you know, as a, as a show dealer and an online seller. Uh, I collect some of it, too, uh, full disclosure. But, you know, it's just so prevalent. And growing up in that, that era, you know, like yourself as well, you, you have that sort of it's in your blood, as they say. You, you have that affinity uh, for and I really the last couple of years I really started to put uh, more focus on it again, and uh, even when it comes to PC items, which is I don't do a ton of of personal collecting, but I do. Uh, one you know the, the one of the latest things I decided to do uh, in the last couple of years was uh, you know graded copies of Hall of Fame uh, rookie cards, and uh, got a long way to go. I had a little bit of a head start with having some already and then added uh, to that. But, you know, when you see all the shiny stuff and you know, like, you know, when you're collecting a, a modern day player you say, Hey, I got to get it. I got to get a rookie card or, or, you know, you got 400 rookie cards to different brands and, and, and right. product lines. You know, it's nice. If you wanted, you know, with the vintage, if you want a Reggie rookie, you know, it's 69 tops and, you know, for for Yaz, it's sixty tops. You don't you don't say, man, are there's you know a hundred Yaz rookies. Which one do I want to get right, first? Right. You know, and there's something to there's something to be said about that. And it really, all it comes down to is when you when you target a card like that is, hey, how do what form do I want to buy acquire this in raw? Do I want and if I get graded, what you know what grade uh, can I afford? What's in my budget? And, uh, you know, but the, it's, you know, obviously depending on the card and the player uh, that, the, the you know, what it's going to cost you uh, could fluctuate. But uh, I still think vintage is, is some of the best buys uh, still uh, occur in, in that niche. And uh, I think there's a lot of undervalued uh, players. And, that, and that's a question I want to ask you, John, as, as, a, as a vintage guy. If, you, you know, I know it's hard to pick just one guy. If you had to pick one particular player where you feel like he's just a great buy to this day, even though he's, let's say, retired in the Hall of Fame, like who's a guy uh, to you that think you you believe like, man, these values, uh, what these cards go for, it should be going uh, for more. It's a great buy if I want to buy them, but they're really undervalued. Who, who stands out uh, if I asked you that? That's tough, man, because the guys – you know, I'm a Yaz guy, but I, yeah. you know, and I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of biased there and I have all the Yaz cards, not, not everyone ever made, but I have the whole, the whole tops run. Yeah. You know, and Don Russ and Fleer at the end there. You know, I think he gets the proper amount of respect uh, and you're starting to see other guys, right? Like Ernie Banks that Ernie Banks rookie card. That's getting a lot of respect right now. Hank Aaron's rookie card, same year, 54, a lot of respect. So, yeah, uh, I, I, you know, I think that people talk about like uh, I don't know. I think there's a lot of guys that get exactly what they uh, what they deserve as far as respect in the hobby because there's there's a a there's a lot of fans in this 
you know, we're not we're not uh, financial analysts looking for a big stock. There's a lot of people that know the history of all this stuff. So there's not yeah. a lot of secrets in this business. I think you'd have to go way back into the Gaudis and the and the tobacco cards to really see the under so a lot of the undervalued stuff. It's not cheap, but it's still undervalued. True blue Hall of Famers from back then. Um, I just finished fifty three through sixty nine mantle, and that wasn't easy, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna do the whole fifty two through sixty nine. I doubt that'll happen, but. You know, guys from that era, like Mays, you know, Willie Mays is, is up there, but he, there's still room to move on him, I think, right? Yep, uh, yep. But everybody from that era is getting the respect. You know, Clemente, the 55 Clemente, the 55 Sandy Koufax might be a little low right now, but, you know, those guys, we know Mays and, and Koufax are going to move in the next couple of years for, uh, you know, father time is undefeated. So, yeah. Uh, we, we know yep. that there's going to be movement there. So, um, but as far as like full out, la- you know, lack of respect in the hobby, I, I, I don't see it. I, maybe I see it a little later on, but that's just because there's a glut of people like Dave Winfield, you know, Dave Winfield had a hall of fame career, Paul Molitor, Robin, Robin, you out, but you know, they're not, they're not to die for cards because they were, uh, you know, seventies, a lot of people were collecting cards and there's still a lot of that stuff around. So. I'm going to step aside for a real quick break, but we'll be right back with more with John. Hey, everybody. Have you heard about Collectible? It's the one-stop shop where any collector can buy and trade affordable shares in some of the most rare and valuable sports cards and memorabilia in the world, starting from just $5. From 1952 Mickey Mantle PSA 10s and Wilt Chamberlain's iconic rookie uniform to one-of-one Patrick Mahomes RPAs, rare LeBron James logo mats, and everything in between, Collectibles creating never-before-seen access and opportunities for investing in the hobby. Just download the app and sign up with the referral code SCN to get your first share free. Please note this is not a recommendation or solicitation to buy any security. All investment decisions should be undertaken after doing your own research. Sports Card Nation is back with John Keating. Well, I, I, to answer even my own question, you, you mentioned some of them, and I agree with the, you know, the, really the first three that come to my mind, and I'm not saying they're the only three, but they're some of the first three I think of, uh, and it's from that 50s and 60s eras. Is it's uh, you know, Banks, uh, K Line is another guy when you look at uh, the numbers that he put up, uh, you know, and uh, Banks, K Line, and Killerbrew, uh, you know. Uh, Playing in the I'm shadows. I'm going to disagree with you. I'm going to disagree right, with you. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to disagree right. with you on Killa, Killabrew. All Killa right, give it to great. me. Yeah. Killabrew, you look at his numbers, other than home runs. Uh, yeah. You know, there was nothing there. And you know what hurt him was the fact that he was a bonus baby. So he had to spend four or five years on the yeah. bench instead of playing in the minor leagues. Or he would have been a better hitter. If he yeah. Been able to play, so I mean that's not harming Killebrew's fault, but the only thing yeah. he did was hit home runs, and I don't mean that out of disrespect. He hit a lot of them. Yeah, a low. No, he average. wasn't a high average hitter and and driving a hundred runs every year type of guy. Yeah. I, I won't disagree with you, and if I'm ranking, you know, Matt, I'll be honest with you. Truth be told, you know, I just had a little bit of an affinity for him, so that I'm a little sure. biased there. But out of the three guys I mentioned, if I was ranking them in any kind of order, yeah. he'd definitely be the third. Uh, out of those three and again he probably made that list a little bit because i kind of was a a a killer brew guy uh but uh yeah k k line banks i always felt like sort of didn't get enough credit because of of you know the players that he 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 played with uh during that era and when you look at 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 his numbers and uh just the overall the, the guy was a great uh Great guy, loved the game. You know, look at the, the quote. You know, let's play too. And yeah. I think he was the guy that said, "Listen, if we had to play this for free, I, I would." Uh, and uh, you know, I, I definitely, uh, as a former baseball player uh, myself, just high school. But uh, I appreciate uh, you know when someone has a passion uh, for the game they they play. So yeah, those are the three I always sort of uh, bring. You mentioned some. Some good ones too, and, and as you get into the seventies, uh, with, with Molitor and, and even a Robin Yount, uh, you know, again, a great player, but um, you know, sort of overshadowed. Uh, not like you know, big home run hitters, uh, which is kind of you know, chicks dig the long ball, uh, 
uh, as they say. So, so do card collectors uh, yeah. too, you know. And so, uh, I, but the, those guys that bat three hundred every year win batting titles. They yeah. sort of get uh, overlooked. You mentioned another guy, Dave Winfield, whose rookie card still very affordable. This guy was just a, a great athlete. I mean, this is a guy that I yeah. think got drafted uh, NBA, NFL, could have probably uh, played in whatever league he wanted to focus on, uh, chose baseball and had a Hall of Fame career uh, in baseball too. So uh, I think anybody that gets 3,000 hits is, it's just amazing, right? I mean, home yeah, run, home run, but 3,000 hits mean you're doing it every day, day in and day yep. out. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, uh, Banks, you know, Banks was a Negro Banks was a Negro leaguer, which was, you know, another part of history. And he won two MVPs all on his own. He didn't have Billy Williams there or Ron Santo there yet. So, yep. uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's probably, if I had only pick one, I think Banks would be the, the guy I, I would select for, to me, like most underrated slash undervalued in, in cards and, and not just cards, but like we're talking about even in the sport, uh, itself, which then again, obviously, uh, translates, uh, uh, to the card side of thing. But, uh, you know, I, I always tell people vintage to me still, uh, you know, it's getting a little bit harder to find. I mean, it's not that it's, you can't get it, but, uh, it is costing a little bit more somewhat, but we're sort of in, you know, whatever someone wants to call it, market dip, correction, what have you. Stuff has sort of come down. Now there are some cards that, uh, as you well know, are sort of uh, correction proof, you know, uh, mantles kind of fit that uh, description a little bit and, and certain other uh, key rookies, uh, you know, one guy uh, that uh, I'm fond of and, and Jackie Robinson, uh, that 48 leaf is, is becoming more unobtainable for me uh, every day that goes by. So, uh, but I just uh, got one a few weeks ago, man. It, it, I was negotiating with a fella, and it's you know if there was a deal to be made, but he was in for he was in on it too much himself, so he couldn't. Yeah, do it. I want to do it. beautiful card though. Yeah, it's a cla- it's obviously a classic card, and someday I like I've to own a, even a, a fifty back there. I got a fifty back there somewhere. Yeah, those are I I love those too, yeah. but uh, the forty eight leaf has has eluded me, and I've told the story. I'm gonna, you know I've had opportunities years ago, and I'm like kind of balked and oh, I'll get it another time and uh, dumb on my part for sure. Uh, one of those hindsight uh, is 2020s that I, you know, like to like a, like a mulligan there and uh, do that one again, but that's not, that's not how it works, but uh, you know, maybe so I'll get a, a lesser grade one, a one or two. Um, they're still expensive, but they're not, they're not, I could do it. It's just what I want to want to spend the money. But at some point, you got to just, you know, pull the trigger. Something I didn't do the two or three yeah. times that I'm talking about. But, you know, Bill and, and card. that's what I call them, Bill Buckner cards. You had yeah, right, right, through right, through, right through the wickets. <laughs> so so I got it. You're a Philly guy. Now, I, I know uh, I've heard you, you know, uh, on Dr. Jim's show, you know, that's the home of Fleer or was the home of Fleer. Yep. Uh, I, you know, any affinity there just being kind of like, you know, from a Philly guy. No, that first set was horrible, John. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree with you. It was <laughs> <laughs> and it was made in, uh, oddly enough, it's where I was born in Alney, in the Alney section of Philadelphia. I, I knew where the Fleer factory was. So, no, but you know what? You talk about Brooklyn, and I have to take offense. Yeah. Those, those cards, though, you know, come out of Pennsylvania, those Topps cards for many. Uh, I like to think of Topps as, as, Pennsylvania all the way, right? Yeah. So, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, but you know, headquartered in Brooklyn. We'll give them the headquarters. Yeah, you I know, the cor the corporate offices, if you will, and yeah. and where all the big wigs, you know, and, and the cybergers yeah. and, and, and them yep. uh lived. And uh, so, you know, that that's what I always talk about is as a Brooklyn kid, uh the birthplace of tops, uh, granted. Uh, some of most of the cards came from other states, uh, Pennsylvania being uh, key. Um, you know, when the news broke about fanatics, you know, it sort of really hit home for me. Now, I'm not here, I'm not Topps's lawyer, I'm not here to defend them. They are sort of culpable, and maybe why this license wasn't uh, granted to them still. Uh, but it's still, 
you know, when you when someone does something for seven years, good, bad, and ugly, you sort of get used to it, right? Just like the right. the hot dog at the ballpark and the popcorn and and yeah. you know, and it's sort of you know, tops and baseball are sort of synonymous. And you know, we 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 got to see what happens here. We got a, a few years here, but there's a chance, you know, those five letters are not going to be on a baseball card potentially. Uh, again and, and for quite some time if if ever again i know you you're not into the new stuff but you you're a baseball guy and and you know the vintage is tops obviously for the most part i mean just some of your when you heard this news you know what were your feelings uh you know your at least initially well i did a i did a quick episode like everybody we all ran for our microphones yeah. right so yeah uh, again, I, I collect in the past. I have behind me, I don't know if you can see on that rack back there, but I have all the 80 sets, Fleers, Donruss, Tops, uh, even Score. I, you know, up until the 90s, I was a hardcore uh, current collector. Um, and I just, there's just too much, I just think there's too much of it right now. I think that may be one of the issues. I don't know what, I don't know what Fanatics is going to do, but when, uh, Panini's putting out 48 football sets a year. It's t- it's too much, and t- what whatever Tops is doing is too much. So you know, I don't think two things. I don't think I know you mentioned the fact that uh, you're kind of concerned about a long term contract here and how long Fanatics has it. Keep in mind, these guys, these these uh, major league owners and major league baseball uh, negotiate billion dollar contracts all the time. Players. Uh, negotiate contracts that are on the average now, or, or it's not uncommon for a player to sign a contract for a quarter of a billion dollars over a career, right? Yep. Uh, there's out clauses. There's all that stuff in there. I, I can guarantee you that nobody is foolish enough to to sign it away forever. So there's there's that right there. I wouldn't I wouldn't kiss any of these guys goodbye forever. Also, another thing I, I just mentioned this to Doctor Jim once uh, offline. Uh, Think about the airlines, right? Uh, America West bought U.S. Air, right? So America West didn't absorb them. They used U.S. Airways' name, right? Then U.S. Airways bought American Airlines. Well, there's no America West. There's no U.S. Airways, but the same guys that were running America West are running American Airlines. Bigger name, bigger brand, right? So fanatics yep. would be foolish not, not, to, uh, not to investigate and do whatever they can to, to bring some of that cachet into things. So... I don't think Tops is dead in the water, uh, or as we say, water. Uh, I think that they still have. Uh, I think that there's still some life there. It's a uh, cooling off period right now, right? So everybody's kind of seeing what's going on, and we've heard Luber and Ruben talk about, you know, the, the they're wanting to acquire some of these brands, or at least uh, yeah. license some of these brands. So it's 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 not it's not a done deal. Tops isn't dead, um, uh, you know. I don't, I don't. I really have no affinity for Panini. I have some Panini cards back there, but I really don't collect modern day basketball or football. So that doesn't, you know, I, I don't have any emotions there. But I, you know, Tops is a big name. American yeah. Airlines was a big name. So American Airlines name is still around, even though it's run by the America West people. So keep that in mind. And again, like I said, the long term contracts. These guys are savvy. They're just not going to, you know, it's not a. Like the cards, it's not a shiny little lure in the water, and they're they're biting away. They know what they're doing. So uh, this chapter, we're we're in the uh, forward of the book right here. We're not even on chapter. Yeah. One, I think. No, I agree. And you, you know, they're smart. Whether you like the deal, you don't like the deal. Whether you're like me and you think, uh, even with the fine print and the out clauses, that twenty years is still uh, too much. You know, they, they're gonna they're smart uh, folks. They're not gonna spend that kind of money. And not do their due diligence and and do the analytics, and uh, they're they're going to try to get uh, the right people in place. And then, like you said, uh, we may see some tops people, Panini people, whoever else uh, from the industry uh, be part of this uh, new uh, new uh, new era, if you will, uh, in, in the cards. And that's really uh, what it's going to be. Time to hear from one of our great sponsors. But after that, we'll be back with more with John Keeney. Pastime Marketplace has a line of graded card cases that are waterproof, airtight, dust-tight, and hardened to protect and organize your valuable collection. 
Each of our cases come with pre-cut and pre-formed foam, so you don't have to cut and tear the foam when you get your case. The pre-cut foam inserts are sized to hold PSA, Beckett, SGC, and CGS slabs. Store it all safely and securely with a case from Pastime Marketplace. Check them out at www.pastimemarketplace.com. We are back with John Keating. You know, I've said on, on my show, John, that I think, you know, if you're a vintage person, this might be a good thing for for that niche because I think, you know, I've heard people say, hey, I, I don't care. I'm a tops person. I'm this, not me, but I've heard other people say this. Uh, I'm not buying any. What? Well, well, you you do just the vintage anyway. So this would be you even before this deal came down. But I've had I've heard people who do the newer cards say uh, that if if there's no more tops, that's going to be end of the newer stuff for me, and I'm just going to go back and buy existing cards that are already made. I'm not getting out of the hobby. I'm just going to support tops by buying uh, the the printed cards that were already that are already out there. Um, and so I, I think if, you know, that there, there's a chance that uh, the vintage, I don't know if that's good or bad for us because we're, we're trying to buy more, and, but the, the pool might get more full and, and more competition. But I think there's going to be more of a light shown uh, on the vintage side of the house, especially I think all the more so if for some reason, and I agree with you, I think Tops is at the, on the twelfth hour, whenever it happens, I think Tops is going to live on, and, and I, or at least part of me hopes so. The optimist in me, in some form or fashion. But if hypothetically, John, if that wasn't to occur, the two sides can't come to an agreement. Uh, Top says no thanks. So we're, we're just going to do our own thing, whatever that is. The retired players, uh, uh, we're not negotiating with you. Uh, if that's the end of Top's in a modern format, you know, I think vintage wise that is that market. It's already done very well. Don't get me wrong. I think it's going to be more of a light shown on it as people say, okay, you know, I still love tops. They're they're the original that I know. uh, And, and I'm going to just go back and get cards that I didn't get or on my hit list or want list or need list. And, uh, you know, and you know the thing I'm fearful of is something you said. You know, there's no shortage of of brands and production, and for what this license is is costing, uh, I imagine fanatics they gotta make that money back, right? They're a business, uh, they're a business, and uh, we can't lose sight of that. And uh, you know, I get asked that question since this deal was announced. You know, probably once or twice a week. Do do I think that fanatics is going to print? more than what we've been accustomed and we really don't know like print runs aren't always announced on some products they might be on like limited or montgomery 582 or some of the online exclusives but on your flagship brands and your regular brands there's really not now people crunch the numbers and say okay if it's one for 36 packs and there's a hundred of these printed then that's how many boxes have been produced but they don't really advertise it. So, you know, my fear, I don't know, maybe fear is too strong of a word. My concern, I guess, is that, you know, people like to to throw those words around, right? Junk, junk wax error, those three words, 2.0, and put the 2.0. You know, some, I've heard other people say we're in, we're in that. But, it, it, and I, I don't know if I agree with that, but even if we are, it may get worse if, you know, fanatics. You know, keeps those presses going based on what the licensing uh, may cost. And these are all unknowns. I'm just, again, that's the beauty of the shows we do, John, is we can turn on the mic and sort of uh, speculate. Uh, there are no experts, only speculators and experience. Uh, you know, experiences. So I'm, I'm cautious about that. And uh, you know, there's a lot to remains to be seen. We'll see. Uh, you know, it's funny how much we talk about I'm guilty as charged uh, on this very program and Hobby Quick Hits and Hobby Hotline. And we're two, like I've said already, we're two to three years away from actually seeing anything in hard copy form. Yeah, uh, sure. You know, we're, we're talking, this would be like the sports equivalent of talking about the outcome of a sporting event 
two to three years before it's even played. Who do you think is going to win the game? John, let's talk about it. It's going to take place three years from now. Uh, here's how I see it going. Yeah. So it, when you think <laughs> when you think of it on, on those terms, it's sort of it's silly in, 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 in one point, but you know, that's what we do. We're gonna talk about it. It's big news. I mean, I, I think it's yeah. one of the biggest hobby stories. You know, I called it a you know, a nuclear bomb to the the, the hobby landscape. Yeah. Uh, because when all the dust does settle in two to three years, uh, it's gonna look like nothing. Uh, we knew before. You're gonna. There's gonna yeah, be new. Great is, somebody Go will ahead. be right. We don't know who, yeah. but somebody. Yeah. Will, somebody will have been right, and that, that's, yeah. that's going to be fun. You know, it's been talked about so much that somebody has nailed it. We just don't know who that is yet. Yeah, and let's be honest. That's part of the reason, right? We all have a little bit of it. Anyone that says they don't have an ego is, is lying to you. Um, uh, and it's part of the reason we talk about it to kind of say, "Hey, remember when I said this? I spot on." You know. Uh, or, hey, you know, I'm one of those guys, too, that will raise my hand and say, yep, swung and missed uh, on that one, uh, like I did with the with the pandemic call, which, in my defense, a lot of people said this, the same thing. We're kind of, oh, a majority of us were wrong. But uh, that's the fun, right, is to kind of speculate and guess, hey, here's what I think, how it's going to go, and then see – you know, it's 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 sort of like gambling, right? You bet on a game and you hope yeah. you you got the outcome right because you're going to win money. This in this case is not no such money like that on the line, but you're still kind of keeping tabs to, you know, for someone like myself that's done it a long time. You just want to see, hey, what did my experience get me? Any kind of knowledge here? Uh, obviously, on the pandemic. You know, I uh, I was expecting fastball, got a curveball, but so did every, so did a lot of other people. But and yeah, and your record is no worse than Michael Eisner's right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so hard. On <laughs> I you know I t- if you read some, I I love all the some of the the details that you know behind the scenes stuff, and and it's come out that. There was a three-hour conversation between him and Rob Manfred the following day. Not very pleasant. Uh, I joked around. There's probably uh, some holes in, in Mike Weiser's walls office that need to be yeah. uh, patched up. And this is a guy, if you know anything about him uh, or you look into, this guy is a guy that's used to winning most of these kind of deals. And so this is sort of uh, – he's the guy that pulls these deals off – and make yeah. someone else sort of scrap, leaving someone else scratching their head. Uh, sort of the tables were sort of turned on him. Uh, not used to it, probably uh, not not liking it very much, and um, probably not a good day uh, on that floor. Uh, you know, uh, in in the tops offices uh, yeah. uh, that day, and uh, you know it's going to be. But he's also a very smart guy, and I've said this too. Uh, probably not a good day, very angry uh, man that day. But, you know, at some point he's going to, well, probably already, let's, you know, it's not new new news anymore. He's going to figure something out. You know, I, I, I think he's smart enough. You know, you mentioned some of the airline deals. He's going to figure something out, and I'd be shocked. I guess that's the way to put it. I'd be shocked if, you know, he follows that up with some bad decisions uh, on top of that, I think, you know, we, we obviously we get emotional initially and then, you know, you kind of take a deep breath, cool off and say, all right, you know, it happened. It can't change it. Can't rewrite history. What do we do now to put, uh, in this case, tops in the best position? Uh, if that's negotiating with fanatics as much as that, you have to swallow your pride maybe and do it. Uh, he'll he he can do it. He's a he, that's what he does. That's what he's uh, built his reputation on. Not from that position necessarily. Uh, you know, he's used to having the leverage. So we'll yeah. see. We'll see. And that's going to be for me, and I imagine for you, and and many others in the hobby. Yeah. It's it's going to be fun to sort of watch uh, what happens next. And again, what you know, it's crazy because we talk about it so much. Or at least that. And we're two, three years from uh, any sort of, of real hard printed stuff. Um, but, you know, the, you know, you, you know, just as well as I do in this hobby. I mean, every week something else happens that that takes the headlines. And so who knows 
uh, what's next. Another chance to hear from our, one of our great sponsors, but we'll be right back after that. Sports Card Nation, John Keating, we are back. Fanatics really, uh, Ruben and, and Luber have really started recently sort of kind of uh, letting us in a little bit more, talking a little bit more about future plans. I imagine uh, each week and each month that goes by closer to when that license truly changes hands, uh, they'll be obviously speaking even more uh, prevalently as well. And so we'll see. Well, it's going to be. This thing yeah. is, is it's a, you and I know this, we've been around a long time. This, this hobby, the foundation of this hobby is the secondary market. So, yeah. You know, these guys are, are, you know, we hear a lot of talk about trying to monetize or consolidate the secondary market. It's never going to happen. They're never going to take that out of the hands of the hobbyists, right? Yeah. Uh, golf, golf yeah. is a big hobby, and golf doesn't have a secondary market the way this does, right? Yeah. Well, I've said, you you know, and it's true, I've said we, as consumers, we really have that, that power one. Now, sometimes I think we don't use it always in the right fashion, but... You know, if fanatics, if if the hobby perception is fanatics is not doing something justice or not doing something right, we can speak with our wallet if it, if it's at that point and send a message. Now, you know whether that happens or not, I don't know. I mean, there's just so many people in the hobby. Uh, you're not going to get everyone <laughs> organized yeah. uh, on yeah, that true. level. You know, it'd be yeah. difficult. Uh, you know, but. You know the majority, right? You're not you're not going to get all you're not going to get a hundred percent. But if sixty percent of the hobby says, you know what, uh, in this case, I'll use fanatics. Where you know, you know what, fanatics, uh, we're not buying that. We're we're gonna we're we're gonna leave that one alone. That's how you send. That's how you send the message. Those, those there's people in that office counting numbers and dollar signs and yep. and looking at bank accounts and spreadsheets. And uh, if if those spreadsheets numbers aren't where they kind of predicted them to to be uh that's how the message uh, gets set now listen i hope everything's great and you know everything's a utopia but i've done this long enough to know that's not usually uh, how it goes and so at the end of the day and not just with fanatics i know you know with anybody even now in the, the two to three years remaining Right, we can speak with, with what we buy and how we support uh, whatever's put out there, and uh, we have that sort of, you know, it's like grading, right? You know, grading keeps raising uh, submission prices and putting, uh, you know, the lower levels and, and suspending those. We, you know, I, I'm someone who grades cards. I'm not going to send cards in at two fifty, three hundred dollars, no. uh, and so that's how I, that's how I respond. They respond by saying. We're grading only at three hundred dollars, and I say, "Well, you're not grading any of my cards at three hundred dollars." No, some people pay it. I mean, that's that's what happens, but you know, a, a lot of people won't, and so you know, that's how we can get that message across. And uh, I've always said that on the show, we have that power. Now, whether you choose to really use it or just kind of go where everyone else goes, you know, that's that's how ultimately. Uh, you know, an individual uh, decision, but uh, you know, we'll see. It's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting uh, few years, and I'm sure we'll we'll talk about it uh, plenty more. Even me and you, uh, whether it be in this show or another show and and whatnot. But uh, we'll see. It's gonna be fun to see what's around uh, the next corner. Uh, you never know. And uh, like you said, I never even thought of that angle. What's to say, Eisner? you know, work some magic. Uh, he's from Disney. Maybe work some of the, the Disney magic and uh, yeah. somehow, you know, you never, it's cr crazier things have happened. Let's put it that way. There's a lot, uh, a lot of not, money out there, man. Yeah. A lot of money. Tesla yeah. That's, money, Amazon money. Who knows, right? There's a yeah. lot of money out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John, thanks for spending some time and, and giving us some of your insights and thoughts. And uh, yeah, if you made me even think about, the Eisner, you know, sneak in the back door uh, manure. It's going to be very difficult to pull off. But uh, look, if you would have told me Fanatics would have got all three of these major sport licenses without those companies even getting a whiff that something was going down, which is what they're saying happened, I mean, that's quite a coup. I wouldn't have predicted that. So uh, who, know, who knows? You know, you just don't know 
uh, anymore. And that's, that's the fun of it, uh, to, to be honest with you. And, you know, we'll have to wait and see what, what happens tomorrow, tomorrow. So as, as I do all the time, uh, John, give out all where people can find, uh, uh, that seventies card show, you, your, your, your social media handles and all that good stuff. Yes, so it's that seventies card show. It's available on all the podcast platforms. Uh, I'm at seventies card on Twitter, uh, that seventies card show at gmail dot com, and on YouTube, that seventies card show. There's, it's as I say sometimes in my intro. It's all spelled out, no numbers. Uh, should be easy enough yeah. to find. So uh, yeah, that's me. I don't know. I'm not on Instagram. <laughs> the world moves too fast for me as it is. So maybe someday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Well, uh, thanks again, Jeff. At least I didn't use an AOL address. All right, I tried. To <laughs> How about CopyServe? Remember CopyServe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. CopyServe, Prodigy, all that stuff. Yeah. Man. <laughs> the dial-up sound. I still hear that sound in my head sometimes. Yeah, it, gives, it yeah. gives me nightmares. Well, John, thank you again, man. Take care. Uh, be well, and uh, we'll we'll talk soon. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. All right, that's a wrap for. The- this week's episode as always thank you out there who download listen to the show doesn't matter where car office uh at home in the shower uh you know i can't now i can't get that mental picture out of my mind but uh all the same however you listen to the show uh it means the world to us and uh, i can't thank you enough uh but i'll add another thank you as i try to do each and every week uh, there's a lot of things you can do with your time and the fact that you uh you know taking your time to listen to our content uh i can't uh, can't say thanks enough uh thank you to my guest john keating that 70s card uh, show uh check that podcast out definitely uh goes back in time with some of those uh, obviously by the name of the show Uh, sets of yesteryear and and cards of yesteryear but he'll talk about current topics as well so i want to i want to make sure uh, i mentioned that uh, as well Uh, you've noticed that the top of the program uh, a different person each week has been doing the the hobbies the people line i think that's awesome i think it it epitomizes encompasses what that tagline really means the hobbies the people all of us doesn't matter what walk of life you're in doesn't matter how expensive your collection is or isn't doesn't matter the title after your name whether it be collector or ceo those things do not matter if you're in the hobby if you're in the hobby you're in the hobby if you'd like to be one of those people that gets to kind of come on the show and deliver that line this is open to anybody this isn't uh you know sure I, there's people i love to do it and asked to do it but this is open to every anybody uh you hear how it's done kind of introduce yourself uh, and just say the tagline right remember that the hobby is the people uh do a sound file of that and send it to us at sportscardnationpc at gmail.com that's sportscardnationpc all one big word no spaces at gmail.com i'm going to air these in the order I receive them, I will try to post each week who did it and tag them so they know to look for it on this week's, on that week's show. So I appreciate these submissions we've got uh, so far, but I want to get as many of those as I can. I think it's uh, really drives home what that's about, you know, with the hobby and compassing all of us. Uh, You know, again, uh, we're thinking about the Carlin family uh, during uh, uh, this difficult time. So, uh, you know, hang in there. And, uh, you know, this is a great, you know, this is the giving season. And so whatever charity, uh, that's your thing, whether from ALS, mine is personally is Make-A-Wish Foundation. uh, But whatever charity, this is a great time of year to throw a few extra dollars uh, their way uh, so they can do the things they need to do. And, you know, even a couple bucks, those add up. So, uh, again, it's giving season, and uh, 
Uh, I try to do it all year long, but I think especially uh, this time of year uh, as well. So I hope all of you are, are well. We'll see you soon. Uh, take care.